on our hand at a time and push from cheek to cheek. We can even do it so that if we're sitting on the floor or on the doing bum shuffling backwards and forwards. Lovely exercise. Don't care how much arm you use to help. Great core work, great arm work, some forwards, shuffling backwards. Not quite so easy on the bed, but you may remember we talked about our shiny bit of cardboard. Just a large piece of cardboard. You could chop up a large box. You don't have to go out and buy anything. Find the biggest box you've got. Slide it under your bum, put it on the bed, on the floor, and you can slide much more easily on your slidey bit of cardboard and make exercise easier. Now that's only necessary if you can't do without. They're making it easier to make things achievable. So you may want to do your steps up and down the bed. We need to set step targets, we've talked about that. Okay. Let's do steps up and down the bed. 30 or 40 steps, not unachievable. You need to use your arms to help. You need to lift your legs. Fine, lift your legs. Good arm exercise. Simple, good arm exercise. So we started with a little arm exercise, but pushing up that bottom is one of them. If we can slide our bottom, from side to side on that bit of cardboard. Nice exercise. You may get a bit of wrist ache or complaints of wrist ache, and that is because we're weight bearing through our wrists. Give it a rest. Okay, so they are simple. You can do that in sitting. So let's think about what we can do with our arms when we're actually supported with our back supported as we would be in a chair, as we would be maybe on the bed, on the settee. We can use the bands. There is nothing to stop us using bands, sitting down, lying down. If you have a ceiling track hoist over the bed, portable hoist, the lovely thing that you can be doing is attaching that, your bands, to the overhead hoist. What you could do is you could set up a, some sort of punch bag. Now, I don't have a punch bag. You may have a teddy bear. You may have a brother or sister's teddy bear that you really dislike and want to punch. String it up and we can have punching. And that, again, is a lovely exercise. Now. The beauty of punching is you can go higher if you want to punch high. You can come lower if we can't reach that high. We can take it to one side because those of you who have ever done martial arts will know that there is not just one punch. We have your jab, straight punch, your uppercut, your round, your hook, your cross. Remember, boys, if you have done martial arts, don't forget you're twisting. And you're supposed to start down here and back, down here and back, round, round from the shoulders, up from the shoulders. So you can have a punch bag, do all your punches. You can be hanging down, you can have something to hang it on. You haven't got something you can hang your bands on. Another lovely thing to use as a punch bag is actually your peanut. And you can be doing two exercises at once because you can hold it between your legs, which is great exercise, and you can be punching your peanut, which makes a really nice punch bag. between your legs that's two exercises going on at once you can't do it that way put it between your legs that way and get that punching in that way great core punch to the front of your peanut punch underneath your peanut punch to the sides of your peanut core arms shoulders easy peasy 
You could have a brother or sister at the other end and you could be punching. You could have things on top of the peanuts to punch to make them jump off. Little, those little sticky things that you may be able to make. And that might be a little competition you could have to see who can make these things jump the highest, those little sticky toys. So punching is a lovely exercise, lots of extension. Admittedly, it's palm down and we like palm up. We have to think about that one separately. Lots of punching, shoulder, elbow, nice work. Okay, more shoulders. One of the big problems we have with shoulders is this sort of posture. We need to get back. So really when we're working, it's quite nice to be supported behind. It's no good trying to sit forwards. Nobody's comfortable in that position, unless like me, you've got great long hamstrings. Okay, back to the bands. I'm getting attacked by a peanut here. So, ooh. Back to the bands. Archery position. Great one. And if you've got something behind you, one arm in front, this one should go back to whatever is behind you. Straight. This one back to whatever is behind you, be at the back of the wheelchair. Closer your hands are together, the harder it is to pull. Further apart, easier it is. So somewhere in between, too easy and too hard. And we get those shoulders on. This is a lovely, lovely shoulder exercise. It's what we call archery band stuff. Now, no flicking. You might hit yourself in the face. You might hit someone else in the face. Not funny. Really not funny. You need to keep these bands away from your face. Try not to let go. If you find that this stuff is hard to actually hold, make loops and put your hands through and that makes it easier to hold because some of the work is then taken down your arm and that's easier to hold on to if you find that the band is a bit hard. There are some very soft and easy bands, doesn't have to be hard. And again, even if you then bring your hands together, and if you get a lightweight band and it's too easy, double it, and that makes it harder. And it's still too easy, double it again, and it gets harder. So if you have got bands that are too easy, just double them. If they're too hard, I'm afraid you're gonna to have to get either lots of space, because that's much easier than that, or you're gonna to have to get a lighter band. Now color wise, there's a cream color band, which you can only get from TheraBand, which your physio might be able to get to you. Online, there's a company called Meglio, who do this funny orangey color, that's their lightest. It's not quite as light as this one, but it is lighter. Red, orange, yellow tend to be lighter. Blues and greens in the middle, blacks and greys the hardest. We don't use black and grey at all in paediatrics. It really is probably too tough for most people. So this one is quite easy. Now the only thing I would say is when you stretch these bands, they go quite thin. That doesn't mean to say they're going to snap, but it's actually more comfortable to hold some of the stretchier blues, greens, reds and yellows. The very thin ones, lightweight ones, do go a little bit thin and are not quite as easy or comfortable to hold. So again, you're going to have to loop around your hand or round your wrist to make them easier. So we can do archery, we can do pulling, we can do pulling down here. And the other thing is if you can't keep your arms straight, if you can't keep your arms at shoulder height, you can still work with your elbows tucked in and you're still working these shoulders. So don't think that you can't work your shoulders just pulling that band apart. Again, if it's difficult, get your slidey board 
or your tray or whatever and slide your hands along there. There is never ever an excuse for not being able to do something. There is always an easier way and you can slide your hands along something slightly and still get a result from your band. If these bands don't work for you, go to the sewing box. It's sewing bee on a Wednesday, go to the sewing box and get some wide elastic. Equally easy. Girls' hair bands, another thing that you can use, or you can use scrunchies, anything with elastic. A pair of knickers. And it's not an advert, don't go and embarrass anybody by using them. We know there's plenty of ball games you can do, lots of pushing. Even from sitting, you can play target games. Both hands, don't forget, there's a lot of use you can make out of a little. Okay, we seem to have lost Mar Marianne temporarily, so hopefully she'll be back with us very soon. Okay, we're back. Okay, look. I'm only a little bit So sorry everyone, we seem to have lost Marion again. I know she was having a little bit of trouble with her internet earlier, so we may be dipping in and out, but hopefully she won't be too much longer. Don't forget, if anyone has any questions, please pop them into the chat box below and we can ask them during the break. I'm gonna get, am I gonna get much of a picture? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what we're talking about is you can do this in sitting, reach, reach, twist, get that, Hello, has it, has it, um... And we've just, Marion's just dropped out for a moment or two, so oh, she no. hopefully won't be too much longer. Okay, I just was trying to settle Rosie, to no avail at all. <laughs> I don't know if anyone, anyone else's children are up till silly time o'clock. I can see Nisha nodding. Yeah. <laughs> um, Leona's just said, um, oh yeah, Simon wants it always, yeah. So currently, Simon, we're running at um, 
usually about eight, half eight for Rosie if she sleeps in the day, which is a no-no. Midnight, maybe? <laughs> anyway, Marion's back. She can't hear me. There we go, move on. Uh, We've got you now. Hey, I'm back. Okay, so all the things we have talked about in sitting, let's see if we can get something bigger. Everything we've talked about in sitting, we can do in lying. You don't have to be lying flat, you can be lying at an angle, but all those arm things, possibly barring this one, you do need to be sitting up to do your lifting. So all those things we've talked about, you can do in lying. We're talking core. Let's look at specifically at lying, be it on the bed or on the floor. Because one of the things you can't do on the chair is lie on your front. So what we need to be thinking about is lying on our tummy and doing just actually lying and working our trunk. Now, one of the things that we notice a lot is when the boys stop walking or are struggling with walking they very rarely spend time on the floor and that's understandable because it's difficult to get up but you do need to look at the trunk muscles particularly the back muscles because they start to get weak very quickly because they're not used if you're not standing what you need to do is do some work in lying and particularly lying on your tummy so that you're lying down on your tummy doing lots of work pushing up on your arms or arms down by your side trying to lift your head and your trunk up and this is one the boys do tend to lose quickly but don't need to if they practice so you're lying on your tummy you've got your arms down by your side not in front of you down by your side and you're lifting your head and your shoulders up trying to reach your hands down your back towards your feet and we should try that in when we're in bed so maybe first thing in the morning or when we go to bed spending some time on our tummy doing that one where it's head and shoulders coming up as high as we can it won't work forever i agree but that head up is quite a nice one it's an important one to keep and it's in more posture our shoulders and our breathing don't forget this trunk is related to the expansion in your breathing. If you're curled up and you're hunched, your lungs can't expand in the same way. So don't forget, we need to spend a little bit of time on our tummies, working our back extensors. Now, the other thing you can do in lying, of course, is lie on your side. And that's quite nice to lie on one arm because that, again, is looking at shoulder stability. What we forget when we're doing anything with our hands is that it's rarely our hands that get tired when we're doing activity, when we're doing writing. Although our hands may be weak, a lot of the fatigue is actually your shoulders because what your shoulders do is they provide stability for your hands then to do the work. So if you think about writing, you're really doing very little with your hands, but you're stabilizing at the shoulders. And a lot of the things that you do, uh, do need that shoulder stability. So apart from in sitting, we can do work in lying, lying on our side. And the beauty of side lying is you can do all those lovely yoga and Pilates style exercises. I'm just going to see if you turn around a bit. Here we go. And we can look at those things like clams which all those yoga buffs out there probably do lots and lots, and maybe some of the boys as well. You can do inward clam, so it's foot up, it's not only knee up, lovely exercise. You can have bands round, tie your legs together so you're working that way. You can have them around your feet for when you're doing that one all these nice exercises you can do the other thing you can do is plant a foot and come across that way so that you are rolling over and over and doing work you can do press-ups 
on your arms. Now it doesn't have to be just one arm. You can use two when you're on your side. So I'm supporting on my left arm and doing press ups with my right arm. Don't forget to swap sides. Doesn't matter if your head's at the wrong end of the bed, just for your exercises. So you can be doing a bit of press ups. And this is so important for rolling, for getting to sitting. We forget how much we're gonna use those arms. And it's so easy just to say, mommy, sit me up. But if we practice a bit, maybe we can do a bit more ourselves. And if you're finding it a struggle to sit yourself up, little trick, get your feet over the edge of the bed, because then it's easier with your feet hanging down to have momentum to bring yourself up because your feet will act as a counterweight to bring your trunk up. So it's much easier when your feet are forwards. So that's a nice thing you can do in side lying. Lying on your back, you can, or sitting, let's go down to those hips. This is just a commercial blow up ball. It's not, comes from the pound store type places. Quite a lot you can do with this with your legs. One of the things that we know is that your legs want to fall out like that. And the problem with your legs falling out like that, is it makes you tight down the sides and it also makes your feet twist inwards. We've talked about that and the reason that happens is that the muscles on the inside of your legs, your adductors should be stronger than your abductors. And if you don't believe that, those of you who go to the gyms and sit on those machines where you push out with your legs and pull in with your legs, you know that the pulling in, you can always squeeze more weight than you can with the pushing out. So we know these muscles are stronger and we can exercise them with a ball in between our legs. We can use a balloon. Somebody's trying to lift it out. You could do it with a 20 pound note, but you might not be very popular. Or I might not be very popular for saying a 20 pound note. Luckily, there are not many 50s around, but stick it in there. And if you can't put it out, maybe they can keep it. You might like to start with a 50 pence piece. However, lots of work squeezing these things between your legs. If that's too big, it's very unlikely to be too big. You can get your legs apart. Again, you can get brother or sister to try removing it, punching it out, squeeze it. You're not gonna pop a ball like this. You may well pop a balloon. I'd be impressed if you can actually pop a balloon. But this is another really nice exercise. Getting those thigh muscles, particularly the inner thigh muscles, working, squeezing something together. Now, those of you, again, mums, dads, teenagers who do Pilates will know that you do quite a lot of work on this sort of squeezing together in Pilates. This is specifically a Pilates ball for that sort of thing. It's a lot smaller. You can use smaller ones to using different parts of the muscles. So bigger ones are using different ranges of the muscles. Smaller ones are using smaller balloons. You can squeeze it. I possibly could pop that balloon. I'm not going to try. But there's a lot of work you can do with squeezing. Now you can do it with your legs out straight. And you can do it with your knees bent. And you can squeeze at the knees. And you can squeeze at the feet. And you can squeeze at the feet with your legs out straight. And you can squeeze at your feet with the knees bent. So all these things are different games, activities, exercise you can do. Make them into games. I could give you a list of games, but that's for you to make up. That's part of your lockdown fun, is to think of different ways you can actually stick something in there and make it into work. And again, if you are sitting in the wheelchair, you can use something small and stick it in there and squeeze. You can squeeze it between your feet in a wheelchair. You cannot. And in fact, I have done a Pilates class of teenagers in wheelchairs and we used balloons and did a lot of work with our legs. So there's a lot you can do sitting in a wheelchair with a balloon, exercise, hard work. Try and pull it out or get somebody else to pull it out. 
more to the point. So there's a lot you can do squeezing. You can put it on the outside of your legs and squeeze outwards. You can, on the bed, you can balance. You can try and balance these things. And we've lost Barry and briefly again. I'm sure she'll come back. This is the only problem with the uh, with Zoom stuff, isn't it? It's um, although it gives us a chance to think through, I guess, because there's so much information that it's nice to have a think and see how we can pan it into our day. I must say, once again, I've written so much down. I've got so many <laughs> ideas to take away. <laughs> it's lovely. I can be back on Amazon yeah. tonight, I think. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't forget Amazon Smiles, Dan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Amazon Smile, yeah. Just a quick plug. <laughs> Just <laughs> oh, Sam said, um, Kerry said, yes, me too, Sam. <laughs> so I think we need to, I think, obviously, we're recording this. So what I think we'll it's probably a good idea to do is actually go through and to kind of draw a little stick men for each position um, and each different stretch because it's really hard I find it really hard to write down and then look back and I'm like lay on side knees up lift knee lift feet not sure what that means <laughs> but to actually see it oh there's Marion she's back here she is okay are you confused Lynette no, we were just saying, um, we were talking about the note, everyone's writing mountains of notes. And I was just saying, I'm a bit confused by my notes, so I th I'm definitely going to watch this back and to, to remind myself about what you've said, because it says you give us so much information, it's good for us to be able to disseminate that in our own time. You know what you do? <laughs> When we're listening to talks and lectures, you get go back to using stick men <laughs> and making little drawings. People forget this is we still do it. We make stick men drawings of the exercises. And it's a better way to remember them than trying to make lots of notes. So if parents, if you're trying to make lots of notes, just use your stick men to actually do it. And you may find that that's an easier way of making notes so that you've got little pictures there of what you're trying to do so i know we talk about clam which is quite an easy one to remember which is the sideways one but little stick men and arrows will often help again what we can do we often have pictures of these you'll find pictures on the internet um, so there are things you can do okay so again another legs one is pushing we have talked at Action Duchenne Conference, and I think we talked a couple of weeks ago, about the idea of static exercise. Exercise where you're actually not moving, but you're still doing a lot of work. And this is the broken down bus. That what you can do, imagine you are trying to push a broken down bus really hard and you will work and you can try and push the walls out of the house just push the wall and see if you can actually knock a wall down which you can't hopefully but you will still do a lot of work you may not have moved anywhere the walls certainly won't have moved your broken down bus won't have moved but you are still doing a lot of work and what's interesting the harder you work the more extra muscles come into play so when you really really work hard think of what happens to your face think of that face screwing up when you're really really working hard why are you using your face muscles i mean are they involved are they going to actually shift a broken down bus or push a wall or what it's called is reinforcement your body your brain elicits as much extra power as it can to try and increase that work and so that you can tell that like, you know with opening a jar you don't use your face muscles to open a jar but you still start screwing your face up as you're doing it 
This is all reinforcement. So if we're working quite hard, then our core starts working, our face starts working, other muscles come into play. So static muscle work actually can involve virtually the whole body. It's really nice, even if you're not moving, do not think you're not exercising. And this is where we're going to is static exercise, because the next one that I want to look at is things like pushing away. And this is where something like a peanut or a therapy ball is quite nice. So you can be sitting on your settee, sitting on the floor, sitting on the bed, get the peanut or the ball up against a wall, up against the settee, up against the edge of the bed and really push hard. And you're trying to really, really squeeze. And if you're working hard, then you will be working from your butt down to your feet, pushing really hard. And this is such a nice exercise for all the right muscles. Because what you will do is if you're doing it properly and working from your heels, not your toes, you're working from your heels, you're pulling your toes up, knees straight, bum muscles working so your hips are straightening as well. And it's every exercise we want. Knees together, push as hard as you can. You can, don't need the peanut or the ball there, it's just a softer, it could be a pillow at the end of the bed. It could just be the settee if the settee is nice and soft. Pushing something hard is not that pleasant. Pushing something softer is always nicer. Again, if you're sitting on the bed or sitting on the floor, you could include your arms as well and do that pushing down at the same time because that will include your tummy muscles, will fire up just by doing that, pushing down with your arms as you push with your legs. So a lot of work going on with this static exercise. Lynette, have we got any questions that we can start with? Not as yet. Okay, that's fine. So um, you, uh, you seem to be covering everything very um, de in a lot of detail. So, um, and if anyone's got anything to add, yeah, Kerry said it's all great. So yeah, brilliant. Okay, so don't forget behind your back. Get your peanut or your ball in behind and push backwards. Now again, you can push with your elbows, you can push with your shoulders. And again, you will fire up your tummy muscle just by pushing behind you. If your peanut's too small, it's harder to do this one on a bed against a wall. You may find if you've got a therapy ball, it's quite a nice one to do. Again, it's static. You're really, really pushing. It's quite a nice sensation. But again, tummy muscle come into play, shoulders come into play. And actually, it's quite, it's almost like a back massage. So really squash that therapy ball or peanut. Lovely tummy work, mums and dads. Get rid of that beer belly before you have to get out of lockdown. Get that core working. Parents, you need to be doing these too, I'm afraid. This is not just about the boys. Get your exercise, you know what I'm like. It's not all about the boys. Your back muscles, your core muscles. One walk a day is not enough exercise for those tummy and those backs. Not if you're going back to a fairly heavy physical job. Okay, come on, come on, let's get those tummies working. Squash that therapy ball. Again, you can find them online. Not the one thing I will say, I was telling Sam and Lynette, this was from Argos, $10.99. I think that's a pretty good investment, cheaper than Amazon, but it has a pretty naff pump in it. It will take you about a week to pump it up with the puny thing we've got. Um, so if you have an electric pump, you really are better off. We once upon a time had a bouncy castle, didn't last very long, but we bought an electric pump and it's been brilliant. So do beware, and you can't blow them up with your mouth, you will never get there. 
But again, squash that. If you haven't got a therapy ball or a peanut, that's enough to squash behind you. A pillow won't work for this sort of thing. It's got to be something with a bit of bounce, some sort of ball, but that's enough. You can do the same on there. It's got to be something with a bit of bounce to actually work. But hearing. Oh my gosh, Marion. Hear us. Yes. Oh, oh, let. I think that was Oakley. I think that might have been. <laughs> Hello, Oakley. Scott, you're, you're, hello, you're very, very welcome. I'll just send you a message in the chat. Scott, um, we can't mute you from here. Just wanted to make sure that, um, because we've struggled with background noise in previous sessions. Oh, you've got the, you've got the little girl there. Congratulations. There we are, Marion's back. Brilliant. Okay. Okay. So the rolls, let me just get again, because otherwise I can't see what I'm up to. Come on, that's it. Okay, gym freaks among you will have some of these things. And I say they're not lovely to sit on. They're not really behind your back. Give you a nice massage. But there are two things that they're really quite nice for. If you don't have one of these, and I wouldn't necessarily go and get one because there are things you've probably got around the house you can use. Or if you've got a small child, you may have one of the inflatable rolls and they're great for the same sort of thing. So the ones that you tend to get with balls and bells and things rolling around inside, they're lovely. And a nice one is rolling. Rolling backwards and forwards. Nice for a back stretch. A lot of the boys never get that back stretch. So you can do a lovely back stretch, rolling backwards and forwards down your knees. The bigger ones are a little bit harder to get forwards because it gets in the way. These are a little bit better, but it is a nice way of getting that back stretch roll down. Parents, hello. Bit of back stretch for you two people. Nice way. And... For those of you who think hamstring stretches are important, which as a lot of people know, we don't. We do like nice straight legs. We don't insist on the hamstring stretches, but it is one way of at least getting the bum end of your hamstrings moving for a little bit of bum work. So you can get quite a nice bit of stretch, a bit more shoulders, a lot of core. Okay, what else can we use these for? Knees. Not on your knees, under your knees. We haven't got to knees yet. It's really hard to lift your feet. It's one of the muscles that gets quite weak, your quadriceps. So that one of the nice ways of exercising your quadriceps is to have your legs over a roll. Now this can be a pillow, it can be a rolled up towel, it doesn't have to be one of these gym rolls. If you have a good way of exercising your feet. Now, any of this can be done to music, can be made into a routine, can be made into a sort of martial arts style kata, do what you like, do lots of activity, get Joe Wicks on, ignore what he's up to, but just keep the momentum going. And you can do a lot of his sort of exercise, sitting on your bum, getting your arms going in time with your legs. You don't have to feel a failure just because you can't do a whole 30 minutes of Joe Wicks. And I think there's quite a lot of adults around who struggle with that 30 minutes of Joe Wicks. We have asked him to do some more wheelchair style ones. We haven't quite got there yet. 
but a great one for knees. And one of the things that you can't say is you can't be doing it because actually, even again, if you're not getting a lot of feet up, just pressing the back of your legs onto the roll is static exercise for your quads. Just squashing that roll. And if you're not sure that you're squashing it, stick your little brother or sister underneath, then you'll know that you're squashing it because they would certainly want to be coming out of there. I don't mind what you squash. Not my problem. I don't have to pick up the pieces afterwards, but just that static push down, back of your legs, good for your quads, good for your knees, good mobility, feet up at the same time. So we can be doing a lot. We don't have to lift our legs way up in the air. There's plenty of other things we can be doing that aren't that. So one of the things that I did say we talk about is therapy ball and what we can do sitting on a therapy ball now one of the important things about a therapy ball is it should be the right height a lot of the ones you buy are these sort of 65 centimeter ones it's a sort of bog standard size if the boys cannot sit with their feet comfortably on the floor it's the wrong size now i know we have been in lockdown and I know we can't get to the shops yet, but there are some big sports shops that are lots of varying sizes of therapy balls. So if you do want to get one, it's certainly not essential. If you do want to get one, do make sure that they can sit on the ball with their feet on the floor safely and comfortably. What we can do, and one of the best exercises you can do on the therapy ball, is what we call ball dancing. I'm just going to turn the eyes side round. And what you can do is literally do your sort of Joe Wicks with your TikTok moves wherever you want to go. And ball dancing will give you a lot of core, a lot of side to side. Please, if you're doing ball work, space. You need plenty of room around i'm just going to put the light on that's a bit better i'm back plenty of space we do not want boys falling off the balls or sliding off the balls and hitting themselves on things stone floors are not a good idea when therapy ball so if you have tile or stone floors, the ear of chairs, then can we please have a nice rug or a thick duvet under that ball so that you are not going to slide off onto something rock hard. So think safety with a therapy ball, like trampolines, which we don't like. Therapy balls we do like. It's not quite the same sort of bouncing, but safety is really important. And if you've got brothers and sisters around, if you've got tons of glass and china around because you like that sort of thing, you really do need to think about where you're using this ball. For the non-ambulant boys, and specifically the non-ambulant boys, because the boys who can still stand can still get onto a therapy ball, you need to think about getting onto it and getting off it. If you struggle to get off the floor, you're going to have difficulty getting on and off the ball. And it's unfortunate thing because some of the boys who are struggling don't want to be on a therapy ball, but it's really, really nice exercise. It's great mobility. It gives them a feeling of sort of freedom and independence that they can move around. It's rare. You know, people will say, oh, they're falling, their balance is gone. Balance is not an issue in Duchenne. Balance comes from a coordination disorder or a uh, an ataxia or a brain issue they do not have balance issues the fact they fall does not mean their balance is poor so their balance is actually good and the beauty of this is for those that tend to sit to one side we can do a lot of work in keeping that spine mobile one of the problems we have with the non-ambulant voice is they're very immobile even if they're sitting on their bed all day, if they're sitting on the city all day, and we know lockdown is not the best decision, 
on the whole, they need to be in their chairs. They're as mobile as possible. They can move around the house. They don't want to be stuck on a settee if they're not mobile. They want to be in their wheelchairs. We need to be out of the wheelchair for periods during the day. And if we can get onto a therapy ball and get off a therapy ball with safe transfers, safe manual handling, safe for everybody, it's a lovely, lovely place to be. Now, a peanut doesn't work quite as well for this. Peanuts are generally for smaller children, for sitting on. Hi Eva, I'll ask Marion the question when she comes back. Um, really good point. Um, I understood the bouncing up and down on the legs to be a problem because it was the way that the action caused the muscle to, I can't think of the word, I'll, I'm sure Marion will explain it um, when she comes back. Um, but if anyone's got any other, further questions, please pop them in the chat. Come back, Mary, and all is forgiven. <laughs> Does anybody else have um, the peanuts and bounce balls and things like that? Do you have one, Sam? No, I haven't actually, but I'm, I will soon. Yeah, I've just been looking <laughs> on Amazon actually, on Amazon oh, Smile. Um, yeah, and they're really expensive. So maybe I'll have to send They're out of stock in Argos as well. I did, a quick, I did a quick Argos search and it's not there. But Marion's back. Anyway. Um, Marion, we, did, we did, just have a question actually um, yeah. from Eva, just about bouncing up and down on the therapy board. Um, and, you know, in terms of obviously we spoke before about trampolines, is it possible to explain why it's okay to bounce on the therapy board? But okay, now uses a lot of leg work where you are pushing into a lengthened position and that's more eccentric but there's more than that on a trampoline trampolines for the boys because they have what we call muscle imbalance they can hurt their ankles they can hurt their knees they can hurt their backs if they fall over the boys on steroids can actually do themselves damage on a trampoline but the pushing the extension the pushing up, the constant pushing through their feet and pushing up is pushing, lengthening their body. You are not doing the same thing here. You're using much more stability through your hips and your knees. So although you're bouncing, you're not doing the same sort of lift and extending that you are when you've got full body against gravity. This is much more a stability because you're not, you're not standing. You're not pushing up into standing. If you are get if you are mobile and you can stand, that's fine. But we wouldn't do that as an exercise for these boys. It's not something we want. It's not a stand up, sit down. In some of the neuromuscular disorders, we would use the bounce to help them stand, but we don't necessarily do that. But it's a nice quads exercise. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for hip and knee stability with the bounce. We're looking for side to side mobility. And if the boys have good muscle bounds, if they are symmetrical in their power, then we can look at things like lifting one leg, lifting the other leg, reaching to one side, reaching to another side. It's about hip and knee stability. It's not about doing lots and lots of bouncing. It's about shifting our weight, shifting our weight sideways shifting our weight forwards and backwards it's that sort of movement that is very small not like the big movements you have on a trampoline and um, marion and um, scott asked a very good question as well are they the same as a pregnancy ball yes i think they probably are brilliant but they 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 don't tend to get called pregnancy balls these days. They're, they're usually called gym balls or therapy balls. But yes, I think it is the same thing that, that people use for, for that sort of thing. I wouldn't want to try giving birth on one of these, I must admit, but I was lucky I had two sections. And if you can hear that, that's the dog. 
if that's if you Sam and I just said, dog, oh, the dog, the dog, but the dog bag. <laughs> so as I say, one of the, the nice things about balls is you can work on symmetry of power. So what you're going to do is start trying to lift one leg, lift the other leg. And this is all about shifting weight and using that trunk equally, leaning to one side, leaning to the other, even leaning a little bit backwards, a bit forwards, bringing our arms in, doing ball games, all in sitting. The other thing about it is, if you can get the boys to come forwards a little bit, great for posture and actually again parents with bad backs doing a little bit of this a little bit of pelvic rolling really really good for painful low back so if you've got a painful low back get yourself onto a therapy ball and get that pelvis moving really really lovely exercise for back pain okay any other questions no, we're good so far, I think. Yeah. Okay. Now, you can, for some of the more mobile boys, do some of the work over the ball or over a peanut. You can do some nice back stretching, some nice extension. So you're leaning on the ball. Again, it depends on whether this is a bed or a floor. You've always got to think when you go on the floor that you've got to get up again. But it's a nice position to do some back extension. If you can get the boys onto the ball safely, keep them there safely. Some nice back work, some nice stretching, some nice head and shoulders up, some nice arms up, some nice arm work. I'm resting completely on the ball and my knees. I am really not doing any work below the level of my tummy button, but I am doing a lot of work. I can swim. So those of you who can't get to a swimming pool, get your swimming done. Nice bit of swimming work here. You can get further and try a bit of swimming at the back. That's a bit harder. But parents, you can help. You can help stabilize them on the ball or the peanut, get some bit of leg work going if we're not swimming. So there's some nice things you can do on a ball, but the word is safe. And again, as I say, you can do some really nice back stretching. Do not allow the boys to stretch into pain. For the boys who we know are osteoporotic or who have um issues with the steroids you need to be careful about what you're doing in this sort of position because you can get quite a lot of strain but if there's no issues at all with the backs then some nice stretching work on your tummy is a nice thing to do and actually it's a very restful position it's a change of position particularly for the boys who spend a lot of time in their wheelchairs getting some different positions that are not, not just lying or sitting to actually get some nice bounce on the ball is quite it's, it's almost a massage and it's quite pleasant for tummies they can be right over arms on the floor a bit of weight bearing through the arms you can do it on a peanut as well the only problem with a peanut is you're that much lower so again we have to think about getting on and getting off but again you can lie over the peanut arms on the floor bit of press up work you want to do some press ups you can rest on the peanut with your arms and again you can do some side to side it's quite nice it's a nice bit of massage, it's a nice bit of bouncing, you can get your neck all unstuck. So you can use your imagination with the peanut and the ball for doing some stretching and some upper trunk. As I say, the peanut, because it's small, it's much harder to actually sit on. You, wouldn't, you can sort of straddle sit it. 
but I'm sure none of the boys would want to. It's something we do with the very small children, but not really something you're going to do with the bigger boys. They're going to be much happier if they want to do that sort of thing on a therapy ball. Okay, so we've looked at trunk, we've looked at shoulders and arms, all the things that you can do with hands, arms in standing, you can do in sitting and lying. In lying, you're just in a different position. Now, one of the problems with lying in arms is it's actually quite tiring to be lying down, sticking your arms up in the air all the time. But that doesn't mean to say you can't do the round and round, across and across. And again, in side lying, you can do shoulders up and down in side lying, forwards and backwards. Don't forget different positions. One of the hardest positions to exercise your arms is lying on your tummy, but it's not impossible. But the boys do find it incredibly hard to lift their arms when they're on their tummies. So don't expect them to be able to get their arms up behind them. Almost universally, when you're on your tummy, it's almost impossible to lift your arms up in the air. Very, very few of the boys can do it, so you can't expect it. They can go downwards. Now there is another nice exercise that you can do, lying down, similar to this one we were talking about, shuffling backwards and forwards in sitting, is the same idea in lying. Now you're not going to shuffle up and down the bed, but you are shortening your legs. And it's what we call hip hitching. And what you're basically doing is you're sliding your legs up and down, as though you're trying to make one leg shorter than the other. And hip hitching is a really, really good exercise for your hips. As I say, you don't have to go anywhere, but it is one you can do lying down. So you're lying, making one leg shorter. Again, if you can't do it against the resistance of whatever you're on, get back onto your slidey piece of cardboard and do it on your slidey piece of cardboard because that makes life much easier. Some of you may have sliding sheets. Um, you can normally get them from your district or home nursing team, and they're very much to do with moving around the bed, but very often the sort of middle-aged boys and the nine to 15 year olds won't have a sliding sheet, even if they're non-ambulant. It tends to be for older, bigger, people that they will give out a sliding sheet and that's for turning in bed moving up and down the bed helping you to lift up while you get the hoistings in that sort of thing so uh, if you do have a sliding sheet that is something that you can do exercises on because you can slide on it and that's the idea any questions how are we going no questions so far marion it's all good okay so what we need to think about is what other things that we should be doing in a non-ambulant exercise situation. Okay, we need to be thinking breathing exercises. One of the things that you will do in both yoga and Pilates is a lot of breathing work, breathing control. It's something that none of the children's exercise gurus ever think about. If you do children's yoga, they will talk about your breathing. But generally, teachers, PE teachers, exercise gurus for children do not do an awful lot of work on breathing. They don't do breath control, but it's important to think about breathing exercises. And one of the best breathing exercises is singing. So if you want to look at doing some exercise for breathing, it's singing. And what you're trying to encourage the boys to do is sing quite long bits, not of this <gasps> that you actually can control your breathing. There are some breathing games, some blowing games. You can blow football. We've talked about this before. The straw and the cotton wool balls, really nice games you can do in sitting. You can get your straw and your cotton wool ball, suck and play suck and play you can have competitions 
There are amazing games you can play with straw and cotton wool balls. You can play blow football. You can pick them up, put them in a cup. You can have competitions. So don't forget your breathing exercises. As I say, get your silicon straw, get your cotton wool balls, get anything that you can play. Don't forget breathing exercises. Really important. You can do them in a chair. You can do them on the bed. Pea shooters. I don't even think pea shooters exist these days. It's probably something that went out with the ark. But you can get, as I say, below football games, musical instruments. I know recorders are not the most exciting musical instrument. Kazoos, again, you're not going to get something. If any of the boys want to play a harmonica or blow a musical instrument, it's a great thing to be able to do. But generally, breathing exercises are boring, which is why kids exercise people don't do them. So as I say, one of the best options for breathing exercises is karaoke and singing. So don't forget breathing when we're talking exercise. It's involving the muscles of your ribs it's involving and your ribs don't forget go around to the back it's not just about what you see happening at the front breathing happens at the back as well your ribs can expand all the way around and this is what we're trying to do now again one of the issues about not swimming in lockdown is that you are not doing those breathing exercises you do naturally when you're under the water or swimming and that is more breath control. So it's another area that they're not actually involved in is breathing exercises because they're not swimming. So don't forget your breathing if you normally have a child who is a regular swimmer. Okay, how we're doing? No questions. No, it's really, really brilliant. Thank you. Okay, right. What we haven't touched on is looking at TheraBand for some leg stuff, or not a lot of leg stuff. And one of the things, again, that you can do in lying is your bog standard pushing down. You can do it while you're sitting on the therapy ball. It takes a bit of balance on the therapy ball. And when I say balance, we're talking about muscle balance. We're not talking about balance that things involved in falling over. One of the problems that the boys have with balance is that they will mostly have a stronger side and a weaker side, more than just right dominant or left dominant. Because even though all of us will kick a ball preferentially with one leg and scoot on a scooter with one leg, the boys do tend to have more of a preference, more of a weakness on one side than the other. But just little things, and the nice thing about this exercise is, again, you need a bit of shoulder stability. We can do swinging, which is quite nice. Again, you need some arm work for swinging. You can't swing, slide on your slidey board. The other thing that you can do with a sliding board is you can have it set at an angle so that ultimately you're going up a slope. And if you have a wedge, which some people have, but a lot of people don't have, you can use your peanut and your sliding board and you can slide up a hill. Whee! So that you can add a little bit of resistance sliding up a hill. And it's all extra work. Don't forget, you know, your sliding bit of cardboard is an incredible piece of therapy equipment. And that's literally all it is is a piece of cardboard. Sliding up a hill is more work than just sliding on the flat. Going up your hill. And you can do the same with your arms. If you've got weak arms, you can slide up a hill on your arms. And if that's too little work, get a weight and push the weight up a hill. Now people will say, oh, that's too much resistance. It doesn't have to be a heavy weight. It could just be a Coca-Cola bottle. And that could be something that you could do. Because basically, the, you 
your cardboard and your peanut or your cardboard and whatever it's resting on is taking the weight of your arm. So you're not doing a lot of resistance by pushing up. And I can feel that work of my shoulder just sliding my arm up and down that now. So if I'm feeling it, I'm sure the boys would be feeling it. Parents, you can be sitting doing that as well. As I say, you can be doing the legs up, you can be doing it in front of you, so you're sliding up in the air. Do not forget the piece of cardboard. Again, sliding forwards and sliding back. If you can't manage wherever the roll's gone, if you can't manage the roll, just slide backwards and forwards. Slide your arms in and out. Slide them up a hill. They can be on your legs sliding up and down. You could be pushing something over the edge. You could be taking coins up, seeing if you can get coins over the edge. Bring them across so the other arm is coming across your body and up a slope. You can do it sideways. You can do it up behind you so that you're going elbow up in the air. So I am sliding my hand up backwards to get my shoulder moving backwards. All different things that you can be thinking about for doing. All ideas for getting weaker arms, weaker legs moving. It's so much easier just to think, can't walk, can't do. Doesn't work like that. Let's keep those arms and legs as active as possible. One of the things that we've always said is that the better we can keep the children when they're young, irrespective of whether they're walking, this is what we are giving them in adulthood. Now we know that muscle continues to deteriorate. Generally, it is much slower once you lose ambulation because it's your legs that tend to deteriorate at a faster rate. You still need your arms. You still need to keep the good muscles working. You still want as much mobility as possible for as long as possible. We don't know, we know there is still lots of research work going on. The better we can keep the muscles, the more mobile we can keep the joints, the better condition we can keep the body, the bigger the reserve respiratory. We know that the more we have to work on with a drug, the more result we will get. So never think that exercise is a waste of time. Never think that anybody is too weak to do it. Never think that this should be a chore. It should be a game, it should be invention, it should be innovation. Think of ways you can do it. Think of things you can do. It's not an Xbox, it's not electric, there's no flashing buzzers and lights, but you could introduce them. This is lockdown project. Get on the internet and find ways to make buttons and lights work. Set up your domino trail. That's a nice little bit of arm exercise. You can use imagination. One of the beauties of all this is invention. Inventing new games, inventing new ways to exercise, making it fun. Even some rough and tumble on the floor, some playing around, some good old fashioned rolling, tickling, moving. A good old roll around on the bed. If the bed's not very wide, get them on the double bed. Go and have a roll around. Go and have a pillow fight. Go and get some good old fashioned rough and tumble exercise because it's work, it's aerobic, it's fun, and it's important. Now we're back to the idea of how much, how often, every day, minimum half an hour of aerobic exercise, even for non-ambulant or struggling boys. There is no excuse for saying, if they're not walking, they can't do it. This is what I've tried to say today. It's not an excuse to say, because a boy can't walk, he can't exercise. We need to keep going. It's really important. So, if there's no questions, one one question from me, um, Marion. I, I, 
I didn't know if there was a difference in um, the thickness or kind of resistance of the thera bands for different yes. age groups, please. Yes. <laughs> in terms of age group, again, it's not so much ages, it's the different colours. The very, very lightest weight you can get, the stretchy, it's, it's very thin, it looks thin. It's cream and it's from the company TheraBand. It's only from the company TheraBand. It's very, very light. You can almost see through it. You can see it is incredibly light. It's from TheraBand. It's very, very easy to stretch. The cream, the orange, this funny orangey color of the Medlio, very, very light and easy to stretch. Reds and yellows are the next colors. You can make them into rounds. You can do this sort of thing. You can pull, push. So actually having it tied in a knot, ready to use on your knees, in and out. In your, on your feet, hands and knees together. Work your hands and your knees, you can do it. Pushing and pulling, sliding up and down your board. Reds and yellows are next after cream, then the blues and greens, then the blacks and greys. Now, one other thing about the band. One of the problems that we have with deteriorating muscle power is we get to a point where power is not enough to lift our arms and legs up but our arms and legs still move in straight lines backwards forwards backwards forwards and if you're lying on your side backwards forwards you can use the bands to suspend arms and legs so for them some of the weaker boys when they can't take the weight of their own arms and legs at the point where you're looking at mobile arm support you can use the band to suspend the arms and legs take the weight and they can still do a lot of exercise now again as i was saying you can use the hoist the ceiling track hoist your mobile hoist you can suspend from there and they can do a lot of moving around if you take the weight of their arms and legs. So you can use it for legs, you can use it for arms, lots of kicking. We've used it quite a lot with the boys. They can be lying on their backs going in and out. They can be lying on their side going backwards and forwards. Arms and legs, take the weight. Now, if you're gonna take the weight, you probably need a blue or a green to take the weight of the limb. It makes a difference if you go above the elbow or below. Ideally, the wrist or nearer the ankle. With the ankle, it will depend on the stability of the knee. You may want it under the knee, you may want it around the ankle. With the arm, it's usually better around the wrist. And as I say, if you take the weight of the arm with the band, you can use a scarf, but a band is better because you get a bit of resistance. Use the bands to take the weight of the arms in the weaker boys and they can still do a lot of exercise and a lot of movement. Marion, we've got another question from um, Simon. Yep. Um, so he's asking for your advice really. Um, so when a boy is starting to struggle on the stairs at school and has had a couple of mo moments of imbalance, which worries school and parents, but does not want to not does not want to stop using the stairs what do you advise stairs are a problem um because obviously the biggest issue with stairs is the dangers of falling and it's not only a case of falling down it's a case of falling up even if you fall forwards on the stairs or collapse on the stairs the other thing about stairs is they're fatiguing that you know it gets harder and harder work I appreciate that a lot of families want the boys to continue stairs. Even if they live on the flat, it may be that the grandparents are upstairs or have a toilet upstairs, and that a lot of parents want to keep the boys able to do the stairs as much as possible. And that's fine. The school is not the best environment to do it. If the school has a lift, it may be that you have to balance 
the number of times you're going up and down stairs. So it may be when they're at their freshest, their brightest first thing in the morning, they can do the stairs, but later in the day, then they need to start using the lift. But again, safety is the biggest element with stairs. If it means that there's a lot of kids running around, if the child is not let out of class early or given extra time to get from one class to another, it really becomes unsafe for them to use the stairs regularly. As I say, it may be that with supervision, they could do the stairs once, maximum twice a day, and then the rest of the time take a lift. But I would not put a child who's tired to go up and down stairs. Thank you so much. Um, if you've got any more questions, anybody, please pop them in the chat. Um, I've just been joined by Rosie, who I thought was asleep. So <laughs> apologies when I'm joined by my little co-host. Co um, <laughs> the other thing is sometimes parents want to go away and give things a go and have a try, see what happens. There is no reason why when we meet next time in two weeks that the parents want to bring back questions from this week or last time. You know, it doesn't matter that because today is about doing exercise on, in sitting or lying, that we can't talk about things we've talked about before. So we can still talk about stretches, we can still talk about other exercises, Next time we're talking about splints and any difficulties we're having with splints, the different splints we use, how to maybe modify them if they're getting a bit tight and different ways of splinting we will be looking at next time. But we can still answer questions from this session if parents have gone away, tried things and want more advice. And it goes without saying that Sam and I are always available on the phone or by email. If you've got some specific questions, that you want to ask, um, I can. We can always put them to Marion uh, if you wanted to be a bit more anonymous. Uh, or if people want to get programs, I'm happy to do that. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. And that uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Um, we've got a number of um, sessions um, before that as well. We've got the mental health and emotional well-being um, second session, which was phenomenal the first time. Um, the amount of support and um, kind of sharing that came from the community was just phenomenal. So we've got the second part of that, and then we've got the third part of the relaxation and chill session um, on the 25th, and then we've got Marion's um, fourth Marianne. session of six for the physiotherapy. Physiotherapy. So just um, thank you so much again, Marion. We really appreciate it, and thank you all. Um, really, really grateful for you joining us. Um, Thank you. With all, all the disappearances today, <laughs> there seem to be several little uh, blips. Oh, the big things happen. Don't worry. Yeah, I think when you when you're into kind of week, week eight, nine, and ten, it all gets a bit. Ah. So this is. I just said to Sam, this is probably the most unprofessionally presented one that we've ever done. Yeah, <laughs> this, this lockdown, but. But as I say, if parents come back with activities they've tried or exercises they want to know more about, they shout to you, just let me know and we can sort that out. Brilliant. Will do. Thank you so much, Marion. Thank, Thank you so much. Take care. Thank, Thank you. Care. Bye. Guys. Bye. I was just thinking actually, Bye. Sam, about how brilliant it would be if everyone Bye. who did this had this session would like to come up with a few ideas Bye. about what you know how they're gonna implement it and then we can kind of let everybody know that it feeds yeah, that but their imagination I want to watch something like that. I'm meeting now all my secrets all my secret parenting is uh <laughs> let me watch something right. thank Thanks, you Marianne. all lovely to see all your see all your names guys see you soon thanks a lot see you guys and Scott yeah great idea about the speech and language session I think um, obviously the session which was touched on by um, uh, Dr. James, 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 Poisky. James Poisky. That was more about learning and behaviour, wasn't it? The speech and language would be really interesting. Um, let me get my thinking caps on and we'll chat to some specialists. Definitely. Are you all right, Nisha? Are you right, Nisha?
we usually have a little chat at the end, don't we? I've unmuted you. Scott. Oh, look at her, honestly. <gasps> look at the baby, Rosie. Oh. Is she gorgeous? Oh. Thanks for your question, Simon, by the way. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's Catherine. <laughs> oh, look at her. She's gorgeous. Oh, look at the baby. Isn't she lovely? Oh, I've got Sam. Yeah, I've got, I think Sam and, Sam and I have been saying how how it's making us feel incredibly um ah broody. No, there's been some messages. I'm like, oh look at her. She's so good. She's so good. Can't fault her. Really can't fault her. Wonderful. And I know lockdown's been a bad situation, but for me as a parent, it's given me an opportunity to have that extra time to bond. So Amazing. for me, it's good as well, but yeah. bad situation. Also with the other children as well, though, because it's lovely to have that time with them as well, isn't it? Especially when the new babies arrive. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I'm going to duck out before I get into trouble. No it's lovely to see you all. Sam, can I leave you on the call? Yeah, of course you can. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot again. See ya. See you later, Bye. 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 Thank you.